Hey, Mark, it's a great opportunity for us to take kind of a deep dive into how we at Make You Safe detect motion with our wearable. And I know we're focused on slips and trips and falls, but maybe we can talk through some of the details since we get questions about this all the time. And I sure. love where you're starting here. Uh, let's let's start with pets. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. The, the data that we collect about motion is really complex data. And it's very hard for a person to look at that data and really understand how to interpret it to know if somebody has had a, some kind of risky motion like a slip, trip or fall. And so we, we really depend on a technology that's a growing technology. It's being used more and more and that's machine learning. And machine learning can seem somewhat mysterious to a lot of people, but it's really very simple. In fact, it's something that we all experience in our everyday life. Um, kind of a fun example are, are when we teach our kids about dogs and cats. We don't talk about uh, them in detail when we when we explain it to them, right? We we just point out that see that that's a that's a kitty and that's a puppy and that's the way we we show them the differences. We just point those out. We don't say oh dogs are are lovable with floppy ears and then cats pretend like they they don't like you, right? We don't say that example to them. So instead, we just show them lots of uh, uh, examples in real life. And eventually yeah. when they see it, they go, Oh, I know what that is. That's a kitty. And they're exactly right that they've, they've gotten it right because they've learned it. And so what we deal with, with data from motion is very complicated <clears throat> and it's very hard to describe that this data has got floppy ears and this one's got pointy ears or whatever. It's just, it's not that easy to explain. And so what we do is we collect this complex motion data and we classify it. We, we say this is the motion data that represents a slip. And, and in fact, we collect lots of examples of slips. So uh, we actually at Make You Safe have initially gone to a lab and today we use real world data from work sites, but we collect data that we know are definitively slips and we use that kind of like, these are what dogs look like. These are what slips look like from a data standpoint. And then we also collect it for other risky motions like trips and slips or trips and falls and things like that. And we take this data and we feed it into our machine learning engine and we train it just like a child would be trained on the difference between dog and cat. And eventually when we show a new piece of data that I have represented over here in orange to that machine learning model, it says, oh yeah, I recognize that. I know what it is. That's a slip. I've seen it before and I can identify it. For you and me, it's almost impossible to see, but for the machine learning system, it can say, I'm 96% confident that I recognize that data signature. And so this is what the data looks like in real life. It's complicated. This is not an EKG. It's not somebody's heart rate. This is actually a measurement of G forces in three different axes. So this is the data that we're collecting from on the arm of a worker. And as they move about going about their day, doing their job, we're constantly sampling that motion and eventually we're able to uh, collect it and send it to our machine learning model. And our machine learning model actually divides it into some different parts. And so the part that we're the most interested in is the part that's the riskiest. And that's right in the middle of these 15 seconds worth of data. And so the machine learning model looks at that. And just like I talked about earlier, it feeds it into its, its uh, model and it says, do I recognize this or not? Is it a dog, is it a cat, is it a slip, is it a trip, right? And, and then it, it responds to us and says, I know what that is, that's a slip. And I'm fairly confident that that's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's great. Let me jump in for a second and, and help out with some language I usually use. Sure. So we're identifying, we're capturing that motion signature, that accelerometer data, whenever there's a trigger of force exceeding a certain level and that causes us to trigger it we're not capturing motion all the time and then as as uh, you have well explained we capture seven and a half seconds before that trigger and seven and a half seconds after uh, and we send that to our machine learning models and it gets compared against a lot of training data and comes back with a classification or a categorization and a confidence level what yeah. we think that motion is. So we have categories or classifications for how many different types of motion now, Mark? I know there's slips and trips and falls, which you've mentioned. Yeah, and there's also a kind of a push, a forceful push-pull motion, which ultimately could lead to long-term shoulder injuries and, and upper body injuries, right? And so we're concerned about that as well. We do have kind of a 
a special analysis that we do for repetitive motion. So as you can see in this example, there's you know something interesting that happened right here in the middle of this motion signature. But if we saw this happening repeatedly over and over in this uh, 15 seconds, we have a, a model that can identify that as well. And it would say, wow, this person is having a repetitive forceful motion that's part of their uh, workday that could lead to some type of repetitive motion injury. Mm -hmm. So uh, a push-pull could be, you know, bending over in a precarious position and moving with, you know, shoulder back uh, movement with force. That could be an, an exertion uh, hazard uh, potential. Uh, and I know you said we're, we're focused on the middle right now, the trigger, but yeah. we're working more and more toward uh, gleaning some, some insights from the trailing data too, right? The seven and a half seconds before and the seven and a half seconds after. Yep, that's exactly right, Tom. Today we focus on classifying this middle section, but ultimately what we would love to be able to do is also classify the whole story, if you want to think of it that way. In this example right here, this worker was walking. That's this um, subtle kind of repeating motion here. They slipped. This is what the actual slip data looks like. And then this is where they recovered and they stood somewhat still after it happened. I think they probably were thinking about what just happened, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've pointed out many, many times that this is nearly impossible with the human eye to look at this signature and understand what's going on. It's kind of entertaining occasionally, right? You can see repetitive movement. You can see somebody standing around after maybe they've had a slip and you can try to begin to, you know, understand or ask some questions about that. But we've even thought about removing this motion signature from our dashboards just because it leads somebody to possibly believe that they can interpret it. And instead, our model is that uh, we want our machine learning engine to interpret it for us. That's right. And this this graph was especially helpful for us in the earlier development stages of our product because we could we could kind of get a sense of whether we were detecting the right pieces of information. But as we've become more confident with our models, we want to entrust the interpretation of these types of graphs to our machine learning system as much as we can because it, it just does a really good job at it. Mm -hmm. So let's say someone uh, on the front lines, a worker in a you know distribution center is wearing our wearable armband device and they're on a fork truck and they you know bump into a pillar or a racking system. That's not a slip or a trip or a fall. So what's going to happen there? Yeah, so that's a great question, Tom. So our system will capture that data because there was a forceful motion. We will um, try to classify it. We'll probably classify it as an unknown motion. So we won't recognize it. And we will give the safety manager or whoever's using our Make You Smart platform the opportunity to classify it themselves and say, this is important. Today, we have a classification called other that they use for that. So this is some type of motion that was important. And if we have enough of those that we know what they are, we can create a brand new classification in the future. So instead of teaching our machine learning model just about dogs and cats, we can also teach it about the new thing, squirrels, right? And as we collect more and more data, we can get more and more confident to, uh, in our ability to identify that new uh, motion. In fact, that's how we got to push pull, right? It, it used is, to be it slips is. and trips and falls and everything else was unknown. And uh, some heads up rock star safety leaders on the front lines uh, got an unidentified motion. And we asked them to uh, have a conversation with the worker and validate or confirm, was it a slip, trip or fall? And if it was not, then let's identify that it was something else. And eventually we were able to give that a new classification. Yep, exactly right, Tom. Why don't you talk about the example that's happened recently uh, with uh, uh, somebody pushing uh, a cart? Yeah, so just uh, recently in a factory setting, we had somebody that was exerting a forceful motion. Of course, that triggered our wearable device. That data was sent to our cloud and our machine learning model attempted to interpret it. Wasn't sure what it was, but it did create an opportunity for a conversation between that frontline worker and the safety manager that saw the data. And uh, that conversation led to really understanding what they were doing in their job, which was a broken uh, cart that they were pushing. And so out of that, a work order was, we were able to create a work order using the system to get that problem resolved for them. And I think it's interesting to note that even though our system didn't know how to identify it, it did 
um, tag it as something that was important and created an opportunity to have an important conversation. Yeah, that's an excellent point. In fact, this has happened time and time again in use of Make You Safe. We were in a place where there were some, uh, let's call them uh, activities of last resort, right? When when this material come to comes to us and it's and it's very crystallized and solid, everybody knows there's a, a heavy baseball bat in the corner and you can give it a couple of wax and loosen up that material. Um, it was intended to be something that was done very rarely. Safety leaders knew that and they thought everybody else did too. But with use of Make You Safe, they were actually able to see that this was done repeatedly and regularly. Um, in this case, we had a work comp loss control specialist there who uh, was really taken aback by the the g-forces that were being exerted and uh, you know we got to know the workers there pretty well that was a very mature aging workforce and and that raised questions which you know we didn't want to give advice about but certainly the safety leaders working with their loss control professional were able to identify we need to do something about this and they engineered that motion that that requirement out. They even went so far as to have conversations with their vendors about the qualities of supplies coming in the back door. Right. So we see, we, we, we have categories and classifications for slips and trips and falls and push pull and unknown motions with more training will become more classifications, but we detect motion with force. And sometimes, you know, it's not easy to interpret the graph, but just having a conversation with the worker can lead to really some insight and understanding of what they're experiencing. Yep. And, and, and that's really at the heart, Tom, I think of what we're trying to do with Make You Smart is equip safety managers to be able to have those conversations and have important conversations. Yep. Yep. Well, this has been helpful. Uh, Kim, I know you were uh, inquisitive and curious and asked a bunch of questions about motion. So we decided to have this quick conversation. Any questions that um, you'd like to ask Mark or that we haven't answered? No, I think you both did a great job. This is extremely helpful. And of course, anybody uh, who's using Make You Safe and has further questions about what we're identifying, how to you know understand it, uh, how it works, how they should use it, what action they should take. We're always very happy to answer those questions and have those conversations, but hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for taking a few minutes, Mark. Yep, you bet. Thank you.